Welcome back. If you hear a hum in the background, it's a pressure washer, next door neighbor and all that. So I'm um, just throwing that out there because it may very well be audible depending on what you're listening on. Uh, so in 1992, the Pittsburgh Penguins and Chicago Blackhawks uh, had sweeps in the conference finals. Uh, that was just mentioned by Ron McLean. I believe, I haven't looked it up, Pittsburgh, that would have been over Boston. And Edmonton's, uh, or Edmonton, I believe, is the one who got swept by Chicago in 92. Um, and those teams were absolutely just on a collision course, just steamrolling through and long winning streaks and yeah, teams of destiny and all that. And then in the final, um, I mean, Pittsburgh, right? So, uh, this looks like we could have a Stanley Cup final between Florida and Vegas. The difference is Chicago and Pittsburgh, uh, had, had both won cups before, uh, Pittsburgh had won in 91 Chicago, of course, much earlier than that. Uh, Pittsburgh would go or Chicago would go through a long drought until 2010 without a Stanley Cup. Uh, <clears throat> Vegas could win it. Florida could win it. We'll see how it works out. Um, I kind of like Vegas's chances in that. I, mean, I know, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, right? But it feels like it's a fait accompli. This series is done. Um, this is the, the choking magnet, uh, because Dallas, oh, all right, let's get into it. Uh, Hill versus Ottinger in this one tonight. Ottinger would not last. Um, early hitting by the Stars. There's a press by Vegas in the first minute, and they score. It was tic-tac-toe after Ottinger fails to clear it. Uh, Marcheseau from Eichel and Barbashev at 111. Uh, the Stars were 0-4 coming into tonight. If they allowed the first goal, it does not get better. Oh, and if anybody's asking or wondering, this is the Parlay All-Star jersey from a few years back. Uh, I haven't worn this one in a while. I wanted to wear it tonight. Um, so Ben nearly ties it right away. Um, we'll get to Jamie Ben in a moment here. Uh, Stevenson has a net feed that's picked off. And then Ben, just absolutely moronic. I don't know how else to put it. Um, and it's weird because it, it, I was getting flashbacks to other elimination games Dallas has been through and how mad I've gotten at Jamie Ben in those games and uh, just generally. Um, so Vegas goes to the power play. They announce it's going to be five minutes. It's upheld. And yeah, it was a dangerous, stupid cross check by Ben. Uh, on Mark Stone, he cross-checks him in the neck while he's down. We'll see if if they decide to suspend him for the rest of the season, or one game as we call it. Um, but it, I, I don't know if it matters. I, I don't know if it matters. And it was like, okay, so uh, Jamie Benn, the captain, the leader, who needs to lead by example, is out for the rest of the game. Wunderbar. And they're already down one nothing. Now they got to kill a five-minute penalty. And every time Gary Galley praised their penalty kill, I'm like, come on, Gary. Every time you praise Dallas's penalty kill, they allow a goal. So anyways, um, Vegas cycle, the stars clear. There was another clear. We're a minute and a half into the major. It looked like maybe Dallas would survive this. Hawk and Paw clears next, and then Voxa does as well. This is right around where Gary Galley was talking about how, hey, you know, if they kill this, they could get some momentum. <laughs> uh, Vegas cycles, another clear. We're down below two minutes left in the power play. Uh, Carlson then has a shot that's uh, that's saved. Um, there's a shorthanded two-on-one. Delandria is denied, and then the puck goes the other way. How often do we see this? Where there's a shorthanded play, goalie makes the save, the puck goes the other way, and the power play scores. Feels like it's happened a lot in these playoffs, and it's Barbashev from Roy at 557. Delandria was fighting to come back um, on the play, but it ends up being basically a three-on-two for Vegas, and they're up 2 nothing. Um, Stone then has a rush chance that's held, and the Stars finish the kill. They only allowed three shots in the five-minute power play, but now they're behind two to nothing by allowing another goal. Um, and then um, wired top corner, Carrier from Bluger and Colasar at seven minutes and ten seconds. And wired top corner might be a little bit generous in my writing. Um, and, and, and I put right there, this is over. That was a bad goal. So Wedgwood's coming in. But, you know, I was like, it's 3 nothing Vegas. We're seven minutes in. Dallas isn't scoring four goals. It's not going to happen. This has not been a series where Dallas can go out and freewheel against Vegas because Vegas just doesn't allow that kind of offense against them. So, yeah, um, this is where, again, if not for the channel and all you fine people on the Internet who wait for these recaps, I, I would have gone off and played the PlayStation. Um, I would have got some GTA going with how angry I was at this. Well, angry is the wrong word. Just disappointed. Um, which, of course, if your parents ever said, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. It's so much worse. You're like, man, why aren't you just angry? Why are you disappointed? And right now, just disappointed. So 
Uh, Wedgwood's in. Vegas presses for another. Carlson has a rush chance that nearly fools Wedgwood. It went off his glove and over the net. I was waiting for that one to go in. The shots on net are only 7-5 to five for Vegas at 9 minutes, but three of them have gone in. Bluger has a one-timer that saved. There's a power play for Dallas, and they needed one. They had to score here. Make it a two-goal game, maybe start generating some momentum. Uh, they cycle. Haskin and fires one wide. Hints mishandles one. It's cleared. There's a post for Robertson. His next shot deflects out. Uh, Haskin has a shot that's held. The power play's killed off, and then Vegas clears it out. Uh, Eichel has a rush chance that's blocked. Strong back checking by Vegas as well in this first period. Stars press in the final minute, and they were a post away from getting on the board. But again, if your shot goes off the post, goalie did his job. You did not hit the net. So it's 3 nothing Vegas after one, and we go to the second period. Uh, Stars press at a minute and a half that kept to the outside. Hanley has a hit on Stevenson. That draws the cheers as the fans aren't completely humiliated yet. Um, Dodonov not returning. Lower body injury for him probably a bar mitzvah, um, which was the the, the statement after, about Barkov being out from uh, Paul Maurice today. I, you know, I, I wish, I, I want to know how it feels to be that happy. If you Vegas fans can let me know, or Florida fans watching this video, let me know how it feels right now to be really happy watching the playoffs. Um, pressed by the Stars, hints to Pavelski, Pavelski near miss there. Marchman has a blast, that's blocked. Lots of zone time, but very few shots at that stage. Kiwi Ranta then has a chance to save the rebounds cleared. We get a power play for Vegas. The ref, you suck, chant gets going. Uh, early clear by Lindell. There's a shorthanded rush by Foxa. He fires wide. Lindell clears it again. Vegas cycles, and it's killed off. But just as the power play ends, Vegas scores. So it's not officially a power play goal, but it kind of sort of is. Petrangelo from Barbashev and Roy at 828. And I've said for years now, I think that it should be counted as a power play goal if the guy out of the box has not actually rejoined the play. Um, I, I, I don't know if you want to say maybe a three-second window after a power play is done, but again, this should have counted as a power play goal for Vegas. Well done by them. Uh, so that was their second shot of the period, and their 12th overall. So they have four goals on 12 shots. That's very economical offense. Um, and they, they really they saved their energy the rest of the game in terms of offense. So they have lots of shots for game four because they didn't use them up tonight. It's not how it works, but I'll pretend it is. Uh, Delandria has a slot shot that saved. Vegas goes back to the power play, and it's a blowout. Like, I put right there, it's a blowout, because, like, every time Dallas was starting to, you know, get something going, they'd either take a penalty. There were two in the offensive zone. We'll get to another one. Uh, but it's just undisciplined hockey by the Stars. Um, post for Eichel, it's cleared out. They cycle late, it's killed off, and it's cleared this time, so they don't allow the goal right after the power play comes to an end. Howden has a net drive, that's defended. He wouldn't finish the night. Uh, Stars get a power play. Haskin has a shot that saved the Stars cycle. Robertson fires one wide. Raw clears one after Johnston was denied. The power play's killed off just the one shot on net for Dallas during that power play. Uh, Vegas presses with four minutes left, 326 left. There's another offensive zone penalty by Dallas. Again, I think that was their second of the game. Um, and it was just being overzealous and over overly um, anxious to make that big hit. And you could see, like, the nerves were starting to have an effect on Dallas at this point. And the frustration as well, right? So, um, stars don't let them set up. A fan got clipped by the puck during this. The game at this point is so interesting that the fans were more geared towards looking at the fan who got hit with a puck. Dallas players threw a towel over the glass you know, because bleeding and all that, <clears throat> and, and nobody paid attention to the penalty kill, to the point where when the penalty was killed, there was no reaction from the crowd at all. I, I don't know that I see that very often, where a penalty is killed, and there's not even a... Like one guy, you know? Just nothing. Just dead silence. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the fan that got hit with the puck, hopefully they're fine. Um, you always worry about that when it happens during a game. Uh, those pucks come over the glass very quickly, and if you're not... 100% paying attention, you're not ready for that, it, it can hurt. I was at a game once in Chilliwack where uh, the puck just absolutely blasted the railing right in front of where I was sitting next to this friend of mine, and she says to me, she goes, oh, I wanted to catch that, and I'm like, no, you didn't. So, um, here we go. Um, penalties killed to no reaction, and then there's a call. Domi just snaps. Haig smiles at him, so Haig has to go to the box for smiling, giving him a thumbs up. Now, Here's why. If you're a Vegas fan, you're like, why would that be a penalty? Because the referee can't let this get out of control. So you give him two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. You just make sure he's not going to be out there. 
And Domi gets multiple penalties on the play, so that puts Vegas on the power play, which means it's time to throw trash on the ice. And it's an eye roller. Like, when you're throwing trash on the ice, you're fine, you're sending a message, but you're making it so that the team you're cheering for, if if one of those pieces of garbage that hits the ice ends up staying there, if, if the, the ice crew doesn't clean it up, uh, that can be very, very dangerous for a player out on the ice. And, and this is something I've talked about before. It's very, very dangerous to throw things on the ice t- for the players. So if they're mad, I understand. Fans are upset. But what happens is there's so much crap being thrown on the ice that they, they end the period right there. So there's 22 seconds left in the, in the second period, and they're like, fine, we'll just everybody go to the locker room. So if fans were throwing trash on the ice so they could end the period early, you did it. Um, and I'm guessing a lot of them left at that point, but it just it just looks bad. It's this is the kind of thing that ends up being shown on all the highlight packages around the U.S. and it just it just looks bad for hockey fans in general. And I I, I understand frustration, but I've never thrown anything on the ice. I can't imagine a scenario where I would actually throw something on the ice. So there's that. I didn't see a Dallas jersey though, so I will say. <laughs> Where no jerseys thrown on the ace that I saw. So a really, really classy way to end the second period, or at least suspend the second period. So I put this with the third. Um, final 22 seconds of second period, and then it's time to switch ends, which looks silly, but it, 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 there was no way to quickly clean up all the garbage off the ice. Uh, so plenty of empty seats, 138 left on the power play, and I was glad there was empty seats because I thought, good, we won't have a bunch of stuff being thrown on the ice. And if it is, it's easy for ushers to see who did it. So, shorthanded rush by DeLandry. He fires high. Dallas had trouble hitting the net on really good prime chances. And then when they hit the net, Aiden Hill, darn it, he was really good. Uh, Vegas cycles late, but that's killed off. This is where they said Howden wouldn't return from an injury he suffered in the second period. Fox is denied twice. There's a press by the Stars at three and a half minutes. Vegas then presses back at five and a half minutes. Uh, Lindell has a screenshot that saved. And honestly, Hill overshadowing in all this, I think, is the fact that Aiden Hill has given Vegas that really steady goaltending Dallas has not had consistently in these playoffs. Ottinger's been good at points, but that consistency has not been there. And based on tonight's results, his safe percentage now will be below 900 for the playoffs. And if if game four, they said, you know what, we're going to start Wedgwood, I I don't know. I, I think that might be the right call. You're, you're down three games to nothing. Spoiler alert and all that. Uh, Suter fires one wide as the Stars press. Sagan has a rush chance that saved. The shots are 7-1 to one Dallas at 8 minutes. I don't know how many of those are dangerous, but I will say this. Vegas was keeping the front of the net cleared, so Hill can see all of it. Pavelski has a shot that's blocker to side. Uh, Theodore has a slot shot that was blocked as well. Um, Stars press. They're kept to the outside. Eichel goes end-to-end. Couldn't bury it there. I don't know how worried he was about burying that, though. They're up 4 nothing. Stars press with six and a half minutes left. Hawk and Paw has a shot that's caught and held. Uh, and I I was, I was, had to put this up here. There won't be traffic issues. So on the upside for Dallas fans, when you leave at the end of the game, not much problem, I would think, getting out of the parking lot, probably getting home. Just there, there's no rush, you know? Almost the whole, whole building was empty by the end of this. So Fox has a net drive that saved. I would stay the whole game because A, the tickets would be ridiculously expensive, and B, it is a very important playoff game, and you don't know when you're going to get a chance to see a conference final game again. It sucks to see your team lose, but an important game like this, I, I would I would honestly have enjoyed being at this game if I'd had that opportunity. And I mean that, even though they, they didn't show up. Uh, Vegas presses with two minutes left. Hanley then has a shot that's caught and held. And, and Hill not giving up much in the way of rebounds or hope for Dallas tonight. If he gave up a rebound, it was kicked to the corner. It was kicked way away. Like there, and there was no Dallas star in the area where he kicked the puck to. So it's a 4 nothing game. I'm going to apologize to Bobrovsky, who does not watch my videos, um, because I didn't have the Tony the Tiger magnet last night for the shutout. I apologize, but this is the second night in a row where we've had a shutout. And uh, it's 4 nothing. So the choke is because Dallas, right from a minute and 11 seconds in, it was clear they, they, just, they just didn't have it. And then Ben decided to choose violence, so he was out. And uh, Dodonov was out by the end of this game. He was out by the end of the first, so the Stars were down to 10 forwards. Not great. Uh, my three Stars for the game, Barbashev, who had a goal and two assists, had a great game. Uh, Hill, I think, had an underrated game. And Nick Waugh. 
Uh, the interesting thing with Roy, he's playing on the wing. He's technically a center most of the time, and this is why I say you can't have too many centers. Roy is an excellent center on that third line, and now with him on the wing, it is just it's. Because if your center gets waved out, then Roy can go in there and you don't really lose anything on the faceoffs. So the shots on net are deceptive. 11 to 10 Dallas in the first, 9 to 4 Dallas in the second, 14 to 2 Dallas in the third. Final shots 34 to 16 for Dallas. Power plays Vegas 1 for 6, Dallas 0 for 2. Uh, they keep talking about how Vegas' penalty kill it wasn't very good coming into the series because they played Edmonton. Um, hits 21 to 20 for Dallas. So they both outshot and out hit Vegas. Doesn't matter. Uh, Aiden Hill has 34 saves for the shutout. Uh, he joins Marc-Andre Fleury and Robin Leonard as the only Vegas goaltenders with shutouts in the playoffs. But considering this is their sixth ever playoffs, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, Ottinger saved two out of five. Not great. And Wedgwood saved 10 out of 11. Like I said, I, I wouldn't mind if they went with Wedgwood in game four. I Because I, I don't see them winning game four. I, I think with Vegas being up three games, nothing. They want to finish this. And they'll be trying to do it in a couple of days' time. We may have a nice break before the Stanley Cup Final gets started. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And yes, if anybody wants to ask, uh, there's the possibility of a meetup this coming weekend if there's no hockey on the Saturday. So we'll see. Maybe there won't be any. Uh, but anyways, there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And uh, this is why coming into this series, I was like, well, Dallas has had a good run. It's been a, been a good run. I just couldn't see them beating Vegas. And now we really can't see them beating Vegas. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.